put on these lights. I must say, the presence of God is quite heavy in here this morning. Not that he never isn't. I just need to drink something or I'm going to lie on the floor. For those watching on live feed, I, I trust you lying on the floor or something. God's spirit is everywhere. Ooh. There's so much I feel, yeah, just to skip. I have to be obedient, you know. I'm not yet with my agenda. <laughs> it's like all that stuff. <laughs> Genesis 28, verse 10 to 17. Jacob left Beersheba and set out to Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abram and the God of Isaac. I will give you your descendants the land on which you are lying. I just really sense that today God has laid claim of Midrand. And your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and north and the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I've done what I have promised you. I just sense that's a promise God is speaking over you sitting here this morning. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. You know, the, the title of, of this morning is Living in the Portal of Heaven. And that's such a beautiful scripture of the portal of heaven that is established on earth. And the key scripture for me for this morning is Luke 17, 20 to 21. It says, once being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, he said, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. And I want to tell you, and I'm prophesying the greatest revival and the move of the spirit that this country and this world is going to see, and it's not something they're going to look out for and waiting to pour down. It is the scripture that says that the earth is, is craving with pains for the revelation of the sons of God. It's when people come to realize the kingdom is within our midst. It's not something I need to wait to see or wait to be poured out. But the revelation starts and it is birthed out from here as we gain territory and kingdom inheritance. And I'm going to show you that scripture towards the end. And I just have to bypass what God said is not important for him right now. And um, Moses made the tabernacle, the temple, strict instructions by God. Why? Is because the temple, the tabernacle is a copy of heaven, of the throne room. So he was very meticulous how God wanted each object to be made and where it needed to be placed because it resembles heaven. 
So in other words, when the Israelites were in that temple, when they walked into that tabernacle, they walked into a portal on earth as it is in heaven. So when they came to the mercy seat, they were standing at the mercy seat in heaven. John 2, verse 19, Jesus answered him. And he said, destroy this temple and I will again raise it in three days. So Jesus spoke of his body the crucifixion, that his body is the temple. So we know that the scripture speaks of that we are the temple, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our spirit is the secret dwelling place of our meeting with God. It's the secret dwelling place of our meeting with God. When we have that portal of heaven, as it is on earth, so it is in heaven. John 3.13 says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. This is Jesus speaking. So he was saying, please note to self, I'm here on earth as well as I am in heaven. If you've ever wondered dual citizenship. Jesus said, no one has gone up to heaven. You know, when um, Moses and Elijah, two people that went up to the mountain. Now, when you go up to the mountain, that's why it's so significant for me when God says Midrand is my mountain, because the mountain was always a place that they would ascend to meet God. Jesus said no one went up to heaven. But we had Elijah who went up to the mountain. We had Moses who went up to the mountain to meet with God. We had Jesus who went up to the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration. And up there stood Moses and Elijah. And I want to tell you something. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Moses and Elijah had an encounter with Jesus. Therefore, they could see him up in front. See, when we are in the spirit, time, space, and matter doesn't matter. When we are in that portal on earth as it is in heaven... See, there's a purpose with this portal that I want to emphasize. John 17, Jesus said, As I am one with my Father, so are they, you. You are one. We are in that same place and that same um, experience and relationship with the Father as what Jesus is. So here's the important part of when we are living in that portal of heaven is that tomorrow is now. God has enabled us to enter tomorrow. The promises that are meant for tomorrow is for now. That's why Moses and Elijah could experience Jesus up ahead. David could enter the tabernacle and eat the showbread. If the priest did that, I mean, it was just tickets. You were fried chicken. You were roasted if you did that. David entered into the promise of tomorrow and was able to enjoy it now. That's huge. They walked in faith of the finished cross before it happened. So in other words, if Elijah and Enoch, they went up to heaven, they qualified, and it means that they had a revelation of the cross before its time. So to qualify to have been gone into heaven, they had to be in Christ. Christ was a revelation already for them there, to be in Christ. So I want to say that, in Hebrews 6, 
It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, experiencing tomorrow now, if they fall away for them to come to repentance. So in other words, when they've experienced revelation, when they've experienced the cross, when they've experienced the Holy Spirit moving in their life, here's a scripture for you that's an example of the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. If anybody after experience that turns back, that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But God says that's like the portal. So they stepped out of time entering into heaven's storehouses and brought tomorrow's provisions in for today. Jesus is the temple. We have the temple. So we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that very thing that folds time and space back together, because that's exactly what that portal does. We are that portal. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the gate. It's a definition of a portal. It's a gate. It's a doorway. It is something that you enter into. Or it's a location. So when Jesus said, I am the door, I am the way, I am the portal. And that is in you. Now, I want to highlight something to you that you might not have picked up on. If you have, well done, because I haven't until now. When Jacob was experiencing his moment with the gate of heaven that descended upon him, he said something. He said, the angels are descending, ach, ascending and descending. We read that scripture and we, in our mind we're thinking the angels are coming down and they're going up. <laughs> the same scripture when Jesus, when God said, this is the Son of God with whom I'm well pleased. And the angels were ascending and descending upon him. Why? Because Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the portal. Everything lives and moves and has its being through him. So when the angels fulfill their mission, they don't come down from earth. They come through the cross. I wouldn't be surprised when Jacob lay there and he woke up and he saw what he did. That he had an encounter with Jesus. Because the only thing or any person that the angels ascend and descend from is Jesus. Because he is the gate. He is the door. Now just think of that for a moment. What position and authority does that place you in? Christ in you, the hope of glory, the portal, the gate of heaven. That what is there and there is brought together through Christ and it is in you. It is tremendous. It is atomic bomb stuff. <sighs> 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says, However it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human mind has conceived the things God has prepared for those who love him. Now, you know, traditional, traditionally we stop there, you know, because we like to think heaven's going to be awesome. I can't wait, you know. And that's fantastic because it is going to be. <laughs> but then the scripture goes on. And it says, these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. 
Tomorrow is now. Tomorrow is now. That mandate, that promise, everything that Christ stands for and has accomplished for tomorrow is now. And he already allowed the Old Testament people to experience that. If you think of when Jesus was on his earthly ministry and the Canaanite woman came to him and she begged him, she says, please help me. My, um, my daughter is demon possessed. She needs to be delivered. And she hounded Jesus and she hounded Jesus. And eventually he said, woman, your faith has convinced me. And he healed her. That is such a key moment that because the Canaanite woman was a Gentile and the Gentiles weren't experiencing the manifestation of Jesus' ministry yet. But she already foreshadowed and experienced what the cross would accomplish because Paul is the one whom Jesus chose to bring forth the ministry of the Gentiles of which we are. <laughs> I'm so thankful. <laughs> in ourselves, we are nothing. But in him, we are the Stargate. Have you ever seen the movie Stargate with Russ Kurt Russell? And um, the aliens and, you know, all that biblical stuff, you know. <laughs> Bible says we're aliens in this world. I mean, <laughs> I just don't want to look like them, you know. And, um, yes, those people on the live feed, that was a joke. <laughs> in ourselves, we are nothing but in him we are the stargate for Jesus to manifest himself here on earth. It's a bit of a mind bender if you have to start picturing the angels moving in and through you because of Christ that's in you. <laughs> Man, I love rocking traditional theology. <laughs> really. You just rattle that cage of it. <laughs> <sighs> I'm skipping to the end. Jesus' agenda. Jesus wants us to live in revelation. He wants to reveal his manifest character, his attributes in and through you. Now think of that scripture of Joshua that says, every place your foot will tread, I will give to you. Okay. So where your foot will tread isn't just merely speaking about claiming physical territory, but there's a more deeper spiritual truth. When I went to go and look, you know, your foot... The, the Greek word for it, is, uh, the Hebrew word for it is quite odd. And it speaks of a cup, something that's cupped. It, can, it retains something. And it resonates with your heart that gets filled. Um, the pure at heart will see God. So there was something about receiving and carrying regarding placing your foot. So here's your revelation for the day. Living life in this portal of heaven means that every revelation placed in your heart by God is the foundation of your next step in claiming your promised land. We move into our destiny with every revelation because with every revelation, the kingdom of heaven is revealed. That's deep, even for me. And doesn't that just bring a different facet of every place your foot shall tread? So that's lovely. Of course, walk around and pray and, and claim it. Absolutely. But at the same time, get revelation for that because that revelation is a step into the inheritance 
I want to encourage you with this. The revival that is starting to happen, I'm prophesying not something that's coming. I'm prophesying something that is busy to happen. It's happening with a remnant of people because this revival has got lots of paradigms and walls that need to be broken down. Because God is revealing His manifest presence. And you know, when we can easily stifle the manifest presence of God with programs and traditional theology. Paul was really muff with the oaks when he said, you oaks suck on milk the whole time. There's, there's food, there's revelation. Because when you get that revelation, it's your next step in claiming the territory and what God wants you to do. Jesus said, I don't do anything out of my own, but I do what I see my Father do in heaven. So I want to tell you that revelation comes by relationship and seeing the Father face to face. Your relationship, your personal time with Him, your prayer life, and let's not drink things traditionally. You don't necessarily have, a, have to have a prayer life that is only restricted to you going into a room and praying. Man, maybe you're alone in a car or you're driving to work for an hour or on a car train or however. But make that prayer time. It's your portal. When you go in and when you teach or when you go to the school or when you go to the office, that portal of heaven is shining. So where you are walking, heaven is walking. <laughs> Man, I love it. So when you go into shoddy places or, you know, well, shoddy places, there's certain shoddy places you shouldn't be going, you know, but you hear what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we bring the kingdom of heaven in that place. Where you go, the angels ascend and descend as they fulfill the mission and commission for your life and what God is wanting to do in that place. Yuck. Father, don't, will you say, stand with me, please? Father, as I stretch my hands out over the people sitting here, our children in the kids' church, Lord, thank you that we are in the portal of heaven because it's Christ in me. He's the gate. He's the portal. He's our access. The cross. Thank you for the angels that are ascending and descending upon us to fulfill the mission and the authority you've given us over them to fulfill God's will and plan. I pray that you'll open the eyes of the people to see deeper in the spirit that they will see and experience your face, that you will speak revelation to them, and that each revelation is new territory taken in the promised land that you've destined for them. I pray for a supernatural download to happen on each person here this morning. I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation that they may know you and your ways, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You can please have your seat. Well, Father, I just want to, at the same time, just want to pray over the finances of our people. Lord, it's a real thing in our lives, and it plays a big part in our lives, but we know we honor you with what you give us, Lord, and we bless you. We give you our tithes and our offerings because you are our provider, not my job, not my salary, and we humbly come and present our offering to you, Lord Jesus. And we bless you with it, Father. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may pass around the basket.
his name Sisters, raise your hands in praise Lift your heads Taste and see all he's done Heaven to earth has come Father, shout the victors cry Brothers, feast upon his life Joy has dawned Death has been overthrown Mercy And before we close, I just want to remind you of our Easter service this coming weekend. I can't believe Easter just came so quickly. Eh? And, um, but it's always an awesome weekend as we celebrate um, the cross. On Friday morning, um, I'll put out on the SMS and remind everybody and on Facebook, but our service is at half past eight. I'm making it a little bit earlier and also not a long service to accommodate you for your long weekend, etc. And then Sunday will be our normal service. Uh, Friday is part A, Sunday is part B, the one follows on the next. But I want you to come with expectation of a revelation of our Savior in and through you. And let's celebrate this weekend as a congregation together as we engage in God's presence. And I thought it would really be fitting if you wanted to be baptized, if you haven't been baptized yet, that on Sunday after the service, I thought on Resur um, on Resurrection Day to be baptized, it's, that's really special. So I want to encourage you to step out in obedience and be baptized. You can just bring your clothes with on Sunday, and then after the service, we'll baptize. Bless you. We love you big time. Have a lovely week. Speak a blessing over your week and over your family, and that you'll encounter the portal, Jesus Christ, the gateway in ways that you've never experienced before. Amen.